Hello, hello, this is Test Encoder, and today we are going to start a new, brand new free course on my channel. In this course, we are going to write computer games. But that's not everything. By writing these computer games, we will be learning lots of interesting stuff about software development in general. So if it sounds good to you, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Our goal today is to create this small game. Well, it's not the game, to be honest with you, because you can't play it. But what we're gonna do, we will create a program in which a ball will be randomly traveling on the screen, and when it will hit the balls, it will travel to another direction. Let's start by creating an empty project. I'm using Visual Studio Code for editing, but you can use any other editor, of course. So, first thing, we will need to install a Pygame Zero library. We do it using the pip command, pip install pg0. And that should download and install everything for us. Now it's all done, and we can actually start coding. So let's create a new file, and we will call it, uh, let's say, GamePy. And to be honest with you, this is already a working file. We can already use it with PyGame0. But let's make it a little bit more useful than that. So what we could be doing, we can create a screen with a background of a particular color. To create the screen, we will need to use a couple of built-in constants. With, which is obviously a width of our play screen, and then height, which is height. And then what we can do, we can create a special function called draw, which will create the screen and will actually work on the visualization of everything. So here, what we're going to do, we're going to use screen, fill, and we're going to provide some color. I'm not sure what this color would be, but I think that could possibly work. Now, it is now complaining that we haven't imported screen, which is actually not a problem for Pygame Zero, but just to make our ID happy, we can import it here just like that. Now we need to import Pygame Zero. Now our ID is happy, and the last thing that we need to do, we need to provide the command for Pygame Zero to run everything. Pygame Zero run go oh run to run it i'm just typing python and i'm providing the name of the file which is game pi and here we are we have a very nice screen of a purple color and we can move it we can close it so it just works as a regular screen now what i want to do is i want to change the title of the window Let's call it My Cool Game. And let's check if this has worked. Yes, it had worked. I have a screen and I have a title. Now, if you remember, in our computer game or program, there will be a circle running around. So we need to draw a circle. And to do this, we use a screen draw and then field circle because this circle was filled and we can say 300 300 which is going to be the middle of the screen the next number is the radius of the circle and then the color of the circle let me just write this so you don't forget this so first x y argument center of the circle, second radius, and third color. And let's run it and see how it works. Wow, we have our very yellow circle. Next up, we want to be able to move this circle around. In our case, we don't need to press any buttons, the circle should be moving by itself. 
And to do this, we add another function, which is called update. And what we need to do now, we need, we need to use variables instead of constants. So let's create variables x and y, which are 300 and 300. And let's provide x and y here as well. And here we're going to change x and y. Let's say just plus one uh, every time. And let's see how it's going to work. And as you can see, a lovely circle just flew somewhere. So we are already getting somewhere, but let's dig a little bit into the details. So what's going on here? So if we can think of a screen of a pie game, that's our screen, that is Y coordinate, that is X coordinate, and this point, the top left corner, is 0, 0 0.0, and in our case, this point which is the bottom right, is going to be 600, 600. And when we said that our circle will be centered at 300, 300, we said that our circle will be centered here. And then we change this and we create the direction so our circle is moving this way. What we want to do now, we want to make the circle movement random. We don't want it to move this way, we want to move it randomly in that direction, or maybe that direction, depending on the pure chance. So let's do this! For this, we will need to import another module, which is called random. Import random. And now, instead of changing y directly, we will make y as a function of x. So we will have a special parameter called velocity. Let's say velocity equals 1. So that's what we're going to add here. And y will be changed by velocity multiply angle. And angle is going to be a random value between 1 and 2. Just like that. Random uniform will create a random float number between 0 0.1 and 2.0. Let's see how it's gonna work. Yes, we see it moving to another direction. Let's try again and see. Yes, the direction is actually changing. Maybe I just need to change the factor to something else. Let's say... Let it be 5. Just to add a bit of more variety. Yeah... Try again. Yeah, I think there is a difference here. Alright, so what we need to do now is to add some logic so when our circle hits one of the walls instead of going out of the screen just kind of reflect from the end of the screen let's do it like this it's pretty simple what we can do we can check if x is more than width minus 30, which is our radius, or x is less than 30. So basically, is it if it hits the right wall here, or if it hits the left wall, then we will change the velocity. So instead of moving from left to right, we will start moving from right to left. And let's do the same for the height, but in this case, we're going to change the angle and let's see how it's gonna work okay something is not working well and that is because we need to add velocity and angle as global here okay that's all right okay that worked just as I wanted 
So when we hit either top or bottom of the screen, it works just great. But when we hit left or right edge of screen, it is not working the way I want it because it's not moving into the uh, direction of reflection. It's just going straight back, which is not very realistic. So let's just fix it. And we will fix it by adding angle here. So in this case, we will also change angle. And let's run this. And let's see how it works. Lovely! It finally works the way we want it. I understand it might be a bit difficult to wrap your head around why I'm changing angle and velocity. So let me go back to my really horrible graph and I will try to explain this. So here our ball. It hits this wall. And it was traveling from here, and I wanted to travel here. What is happening here? First, our direction is changing from right to left to left to right. That's why we change velocity. But that's not everything. If we change only velocity, but we don't change angle, our ball will just go here. Remember, y equals x multiply angle we want to move using different route and that's why we negate the angle so that's already quite cool isn't it but now we're going to do something very interesting now we will decouple our presentation logic from our data model and that is something really cool and very useful in production development now we have our presentation logic and business logic they all mix together and that's not quite good. Can we do it any better? Of course we can. Let's try. Let's see. First of all, let's get rid of magic numbers. And 30, which is the radius of our circle, is a magic number. So let's move it to constant. Radius. And then we can just replace this here. Lovely. You can also use constant for colors. So let's say I want to have the ground color and I want to have circle color. Yeah, those are correct. So let's just replace this and just replace that. It already looks a bit better. But we are not even close to what I wanted. There are lots of things happening here which are not very nice. For example, we use global variables, which is not good. We also do some calculations in the update function. And our circle is not encapsulated in any way. So let's create a new class, which will be called circle. Oh, actually, it was suggesting ball. I think it's a good name as well. So our ball is going to have this values. So it's going to have a coordinate x, coordinate y. It's going to have radius and it's also going to have color. So what I want to do, I want to create property for x. And in this case, I will be making sure that I'm always returning integer because I want to make sure that even if X becomes flawed at some point, and in our case, Y is almost always flawed because the angle is flawed. I want to make sure that I'm always returning an integer value to Pygame 0. I'm going to do the same stuff for Y. And I'm going to do the same stuff for radius. Yeah. Well, radius can be actually just integer because I'm not calculating radius in any way. So just let's forget this. Okay, so this is nice. Now what I want to do, I want to be able to update my circle. So let's say, let's create method move. 
and this move will be doing the calculation. So now I can put both velocity and angle to my ball. So angle can be random, velocity can be 1, and xy, oh, we can just leave them as is here, there is nothing wrong with them. But in the move section, what we can do, we can just copy that and put it here and do a bit of editing. Lovely! What we've forgotten to do? We've forgotten to add a logic for calculating x and y. So let's do this here and replace that. All right, and now in the update, what we're going to do? We're going to create a ball here. Now we're going to go to update and we just will do ball move here. And here we will just use ball x, ball y, and the same for the radius and color. That was refactoring. I didn't change the logic of the application. I just made it a little bit more neat and tidy. Let's see if it's still working. No, it is not working. Let's see. Because in the init I was expecting to provide this, which I don't need. So let's run this. Yeah, it is working. And our logic for reflection is working still. Just let's have another glance at the code here. So what we have now? We have now a class ball, which is doing all the stuff related to the ball movement. And if we look at our logic for the game itself, we just have update, which is updating the ball. And we have draw, which is just two lines. Create the screen with the background color, and draw our ball where we want it to be with the radius we want it to have and color we want it to have. So that was very cool, wasn't it? I hope you liked this series. If I didn't explain something clear enough, please drop me a comment and I will do my best to explain it better. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me and see you around.